हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू दिस नेक्स्ट वीडियो ऑन क्लासिकल मैकेनिक्स टिल नाउ वी वर स्टडिंग अ सिंगल पार्टिकल राइट इन दिस वीडियो वी विल स्टडी अ सिस्टम ऑफ पार्टिकल्स सो वी हैव सपोज अ सिस्टम ऑफ एन पार्टिकल्स वी हैव समथिंग लाइक दिस वी हैव पार्टिकल पी वन वी हैव पार्टिकल पी टू वी हैव पार्टिकल पी थ्री पी फोर एंड सो ऑन पी एन राइट सो वी हैव दिस सिस्टम ऑफ पार्टिकल एंड वी वॉन्ट टू स्टडी द मोशन ऑफ दिस सिस्टम ऑफ पार्टिकल so what is the difference between studying the system of particles and a single particle motion here we have for example for a single particle we had a uh, an external force acting on this particle here also we have external forces acting on the system other than that this particle p1 will exert some force on the particle p2 it will exert on some force on the particle p3 and so on right so these particles are interacting among themselves so we have internal forces acting on the system as well right so this is the only difference that we have internal forces coming into picture when we are studying the system of particles so if we want to study the system of particles what we can do we can study the equation motion of equation of motion of the is particle single particle and then we can uh, sum uh, that system uh, that equation and we will get the equation of motion for the system of particles let us do that for the is particle suppose i have this is particle this is i s particle suppose f i e e stands for external is the external force acting on the i s particle this is the external force acting on i s particle right then suppose j j1 there is a particle j1 that is exerting a, an internal force on i s particle which i am denoting with f j1 i right and then some other particle p j2 that is exerting an extern, uh, internal force on this is particle that is f j2 i and then there is some uh, uh, third particle p j3 that is exerting a force f j3 i on this is particle and so on right so what is the total internal force acting on this is particle that is f j i summation runs over j this is the total internal force acting on the is particle right so if we have to write down the equation of motion of the is particle how we can write suppose ri is the position vector of is particle then mass into acceleration mi is the mass acceleration is your d2 ri by dt2 is equal to total forces acting on the particle now what are the total forces acting on the particle is particle that is the external force f i e plus summation f j i summation runs over j right okay now if we want to uh, i can write the same equation as d2 summation i can this sum uh, sorry i'm sorry this is for a single particle i s particle right and suppose we want to study all the particles together then what we will do we will take the sum of this equation summation runs over i from 1 to n where 1 to n is the number of particles we have particles starting from p1 then p2 then p3 and so on pn right so we have something like this summation i i from 1 to n mi d2 ri by dt2 is equal to summation f i e that is external force acting on the is particle i from 1 to n plus summation i summation j f j i right where f j i is the internal force exerted by i s j s particle exerted by j s particle on i s particle right this is what we have now we have uh, newton's third law of motion right for tackling this this term what we have we have something called newton's third law of motion what is newton's third law of motion it states that if pi exert a force pj on uh, exerts a force f ij on pj then pj will exert the same force in the opposite direction right so it means that for every fij there is minus fij in this sum right so we assume that newton's third law of motion is followed right then if newton's third law of motion is followed 
then this term will be zero because for every fij there is minus fij or fji for every fij there is minus fij for uh, in this sum okay so this term is zero thanks to newton's third law of motion okay and we call that form of newton's third law of motion as the weak form weak form weak form means we have uh, the fo uh, the forces two particle exerted on each other are equal and opposite okay weak form means the forces that two particles exert on each other are equal and opposite okay so we assume that if this is fji that is the ith jth particle force exerted by jth particle on ith particle then this is fij right that is the uh, force exerted by ith particle on jth particle this is the weak form in the strong form they also act along the same line but we don't need that assumption here so if our forces are such that they follow the newton's weak law of motion then in this particular equation this last term vanishes this term vanishes if we assume that the internal forces are obeying the third law of motion in its weak form right so what do we have we have this mi d2 ri by dt2 is equal to summation f i e i from 1 to n and i from 1 to n this is a simpler thing this is a simple thing we are left with now what is this this is the total external force acting on the system total external force acting on the system right and this equation is true when internal forces obey newton's third law in weak form at least in weak form right so we have summation i from 1 to n i can write this thing as d2 r by dt2 d2 by dt2 of mi ri is equal to total external force i write it like this right this is the total external force acting on the system now to further simplify this left hand side we define something this is the new definition for a system of particles we say that suppose we have a system of particles we have system of n particles p1 p2 pn with position vector r1 r2 rn then we call some we define something called centroid of system of particle centroid or center of mass or center of gravity right we define it as we denote that as r that is summation mi ri divided by summation mi this is how we define the center of mass or center of gravity or centroid of a system of particle now if we use this definition this left hand side will become d2 by dt2 of i can write it as mi ri divided by mi and i can multiply with summation mi is equal to total external force acting on the system right now what what do we have this is your total mass of the system i'll denote it with capital m and this is the center of mass i'll cap uh, this is capital r so we have capital m d2 by dt2 of capital r is equal to f e right so this is nothing but same as the equation of motion as in the case of single particle the only difference is th that instead of position vector we have the position vector of the center of mass of the system right so uh, what do uh, uh, what can be interpret from here we can see that the internal forces okay which are obeying newton's third law of motion in weak form don't have any effect on the motion of the system right so we don't have to worry about the internal such internal forces 
right they don't have any effect on the motion of the system so we can have an example suppose i have a shell here right that is uh, going in a projectile motion that that i that is following a projectile motion and suppose this is the motion this is the uh, parabola which this shell is obeying right this is just a single particle and suppose somewhere here this explodes into two pieces right and this one piece is following this path and the other piece is following some other path right but still now we have uh, initially we had this single particle we had this single particle now we have a system of particles two particles but if you will compute uh, calculate the center of mass you will see that the center of mass is still obeying the same uh, project uh, same trajectory because there is no external force acting okay so it means that when there is there are no external forces acting on the system of particle the center of mass will move as it was moving earlier right so we have an example of an exploding shell okay so suppose you have a shell which somehow uh, due to internal forces explodes into pieces uh, and originally it was following some path then if you uh, calculate the center of mass uh, if you compute the trajectory of the center of mass of the new system of particles it will coincide with the earlier trajectory because of this thing we have proved that internal forces which are obeying the newton's third law of motion in the weak form they don't have any effect on the equation of motion and henceforth they don't have any effect on the trajectory of the uh, particle initially we had a single particle and after that after the explosion we have multiple particles but still the center of gravity of this is the multiple multiple particles will follow the same path as it was following earlier right okay now further from here we can see that uh, now next thing okay we have this thing we get this thing m into d2r by dt2 is equal to total external force acting on the system right now let us see what is the total angular uh, total linear momentum of the system total linear momentum means you have to sum we have total linear momentum as linear momentum of a single particle and then you sum it i from 1 to n right this is the total linear momentum of the system this is equal to d by by dt of mi ri okay this is equal to d by by dt of mi ri divided by summation mi into summation mi right this is the center of mass and this is total mass of, uh, mass of the system m this is r vector so this is d by by dt of r right so it means that i can write this first equation as m d by by dt of m dr by dt is equal to total external force acting on the system so it is what is this this is by dt d by by dt of p is equal to fp right now what is this it says that rate of change of the linear momentum of the system is equal to total external forces acting on the system so from here we have the conservation of linear momentum for the system of particles from here we have conservation of linear momentum for the system of particles what what is this this says that if the total external force acting on the system of particles is zero then the linear momentum of the system is conserved the linear momentum of the system is conserved right so we have this law of conservation of linear momentum for a system of particles and it is similar to what we had for a single particle okay thank you